Hey everybody, Luke here, and today again we are talking about neck pain and headaches. And what I want to talk to you about today is a, a gentleman that I met several years ago, and um, just kind of the story of this gentleman and how we actually were looking, at, we were overlooking things with his neck pain, and what we should have been looking at was his shoulder. So that's the title of the blog today: is how shoulder pain causes neck pain. So let me give you this guy's story. So let's call him Nick. Nick is about 24 years old or so when I started seeing him, and he had kind of the classical we call it a suboccipital headache, which if you've heard some of this stuff already, it's just at the base of your skull there, where you get these really tender points at the base of your skull, and there's a lot of tension there. The headaches can end up kind of wrapping up and around your head or over into your eyes and your forehead, things like that. So Nick comes to me, and um, you know, I think I've, I kind of think I've got an easy one here. He's got the typical headache. Uh, it's right there. I can put my fingers on it. So I set about my usual work, and I start treating it. Um, so I do things like you know deep tissue massage, different types of release techniques, traction where I'm stretching his neck, mobilize the joints, make sure everything is good. So basically at this point I've got my full focus on Nick's neck and at the same time he's also seen a chiropractor and he's starting to see one of the pain specialists who will do injections if he needs to. So uh, a little more background on Nick, he is again about 24 years old and he teaches music at a local, I think it was a high school, high school or middle school. So on the side where he's having the neck pain, he's constantly using his arm, you know, things like this or things like this to do music. I don't really know what they're doing, I was never in music, but you get the drift there. So after a few weeks of treating Nick, he's really, he's doing better at times, but his headaches will still at some point just kind of um, like lay him out for a while. So you know, you would think between me and the chiropractor, like he should be doing really well. He's young, not a whole lot going on medically. So what happened in his case actually is he had a different consult from a different physical therapist. So I'm very embarrassed to tell you this, but the other therapist said, okay, well, we're looking at your neck. And then he eventually looked at Nick's shoulder, he looked at his rotator cuff. And what he had found is that Nick has a weak rotator cuff. So as you can imagine for Nick, and I overlooked it, so sorry Nick, um, he was doing a lot of work with his arm, a lot of repetitive motions, you know, out in music and throwing the ball for his dog, things like that. And his rotator cuff was actually very irritated. And what I ended up discovering with him then is the shoulder was actually the underlying cause of the neck pain. So basically, this is how, I'm gonna lay it out for you, this is how shoulder pain causes neck pain. So basically, if your shoulder, especially your rotator cuff, isn't working well, it's irritated, things like that, when you go out to do like reaching movements or repetitive motions, overhead, behind your back, things like that, instead of having a nice smooth movement pattern in your shoulder, you're gonna start to get over recruitment of different muscles around your shoulder, especially the muscles towards the back, the shoulder blade there, which we call your scapula. So a lot of these scapular muscles are going to start overworking and the majority of them are attaching to your spine and going up to your neck. So in Nick's case, as his shoulder mechanics are breaking down because of his irritated rotator cuff muscles, his other muscles up here are kicking in and working overtime, doing these kind of compensatory patterns which we don't like to see with our shoulder patients and that's what's irritating his neck muscles. So the big lesson there with him was I was just treating what I figured was the source of his pain up here at the suboccipital muscles, but that wasn't truly the root cause of his pain. These muscles were being irritated by a problem in the shoulder. So that was the big lesson I learned with him. This was about six or seven years ago, so of course I like to think that won't happen to me again, and I was a little bit humbled by it because another therapist found it and I had overlooked it. So um, regardless to say then next, as we started shifting our focus and not only working on his neck, but also strengthening his rotator cuff and restoring a nice smooth movement pattern so these muscles could relax, he did much better, didn't end up needing injections and things like that. So that was the moral of the story, uh, and that's in general how Shoulder pain can cause neck pain and ultimately cause headaches. And the shoulder is one of those things that we see a lot of people with shoulder issues. And it's very common, you know, when they come in with a shoulder issue, it's very common to say, oh, and by the way, how is your neck feeling? It's like, oh gosh, it's really sore up through here. Same thing. It's just the reverse with Nick. He was complaining about his neck more than his shoulder. Um, but again, when the shoulder gets irritated like that, a lot of times these muscles, they, they're trying to help, they're trying to guard, they're trying to do extra work to save some stress on your rotator cuff. But ultimately, if that goes on for long enough, now these muscles are a source of pain. So good things to think about if you're dealing with either neck pain, headaches, or shoulder pain. Um, you know, Just be aware that the two are very well interconnected there. You could also look at things even in mid-back, low-back that can be causing these different movement patterns. So I hope for some of you that gives you a little bit more insight as to how some of these things aren't as simple as they seem. And if you've been trying certain things that aren't working, that could be one potential solution for you. So keep that in mind. And if you have more questions or comments, I'd love for you to leave them below. 
below the video and I'll leave my contact information there as well. If you have anything that you want to reach out to me for, feel free to do so. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.